Hi and welcome to City Happenings. I'm Mayor David Black. Papillion continues to grow while maintaining its status as one of the best places to live in America. Papillion offers much to its residents so they can live, work, and play. For more about Papillion, here's City Happenings. Thanks, Mayor Black. The Scout Cabin in City Park is experiencing major renovation. The nearly 100-year-old cabin is home to Scout Troop 60. It ties us back to our history, um, you know, that goes back 100, 105 years uh, for this troop being here. Um, you know, there's been a lot of people have told me that when they, when, that are, you know, older now, that when they first moved to Papillion, when they were kids, first thing they saw was that cabin and, and like, wow, that's cool. And it just, it made them want to join the Scouts. The cabin is a great recruiting tool. Every fall we have a, a recruiting drive here. So we build a, a rope bridge and, um, you know, get kids out here. We, uh, we take them inside and show them the inside of the cabin and stuff like that. The cabin's worth and meaning cannot be overstated. It's just a real um, tie to our past, kind of celebrates the scouting tradition. The people that build it were actually scouts, so um, I mean, that's really cool. Cabin renovation has been a labor of love, and Shalane says it'll be great once the work is finished. The adults have been kind of taking it, um, taking the ball for up to this point because it's just too much for the kids to do. Uh, once it gets set down, we have to scrape the, um, the old bark off. We're going to rechink it. We're going to uh, see, we have some sealant we got to buy. And that's the kind of things that the scouts can do so they can get involved. So I'm kind of looking forward to that more than anything. I think it's awesome that we've got this far, but we still have a long ways to go. Once everything is updated and renovated, Shalane says the scout cabin will be a showpiece. It's going to be beautiful when it's all done. Right now it looks a little sad and forgotten. It's something the community will be proud of. Shalane recognized a great community support. I'm really proud of the community for, for stepping up and, and we, when we started fundraising we were like how are we going to get this much money to do this and people did. I mean it took us like three or four months once we got the word out that the money was there. So I just think that's awesome um, and really appreciate it and we're going to have a dedication probably next May so I hope everybody can come out at that time and and participate with the dedication of it or rededication of it. The city's fire department works with local schools to continually emphasize fire safety. The recent annual fire sprinkler demonstration has had an effect on school fire drills. Completely. Um, we actually had a fire drill that very next day and it was a point of topic. As soon as we came back in the classroom, they said, so when the fire bell rings, it sounded like the sprinklers would already have started. And I said, well, yeah, rem you know, we talked about, remember, you know, it has to heat up enough, it melts the cover, and then the sprinklers go. And I said, it won't start them in the entire building, because remember, it doesn't happen that way. And we talked about that, and the kids are like, so we might be getting wet as we leave, but we wouldn't be on fire. And that thought process was a learning moment for the teacher. I kind of sat there and I thought, well, you wouldn't have been on fire, I hope, anyway. But to hear that 10-year-old perspective, like, oh, we do these fire drills because there's a fire and we're in danger. I think it just, I think it relaxed some of our anxious kids and just in general gave a whole new perspective of, yes, in the event of a fire, we may be getting wet, but this is why we're getting wet. Or, you know, just that preparedness piece, I think was huge for them. Stacy says having the fire department work with the schools is priceless. Every time we got the email to have the opportunity, I think we were the first within minutes of getting that email. We jumped on it because we understand the importance of kids seeing it and how wonderful of a job our fire department is to think, well, we need to show 10 and 11 year olds this demonstration. And the kids that couldn't come, we need to go out to their schools and we need to show them what it looks like when a fire fireman shows up to your house. Stacy praises Fire Chief Bill Bowes for his planning and assertiveness. The forethought on Chief Bose's part to bring it down to a 10-year-old level is phenomenal. And then, you know, anybody that's with him, they talk to these kids as if they were children. They, they remembered that, you know, you're talking to 9 and 10-year-old kids here. You have to bring it down without freaking them out, but you have to bring it down to their level. And I think that just, I mean, it's, like I said, it's a priceless experience. A new health and wellness clinic with a unique perspective opens in Midlands Place. Chamber of Commerce weather, so thanks for coming out. Uh, really just want to thank you.
you guys for investing in Papillion. There's been more and more of these where it's a, I don't think people realize, a Papillion resident opening a Papillion business, and that's a huge statement for the, to the community. So I want to thank you for that. I uh, want to thank uh, Midlands Place again for beautiful development here. I mean, none of these buildings were here, what, seven years ago? Uh, this was 15 acres of vacant ground. Now we've got a beautiful complex, a lot of businesses. And you start seeing a theme, a lot of it's around health and wellness. Um, so it fits in great, and uh, it's become a big priority of the city as well. Uh, Councilman Steve Ingberg's with us, longest serving council member, and uh, he's put a high priority in that as well. A lot of the uh, Papillion Landing, the community center, been working on that about seven years, and again, it's all about community wellness, and I think it fits great with your guys' story. So I just want to say congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Our faith had to be a factor in our business and in what we do every day and how we interact with people. And so that's definitely something that in our clinic um, that is part of our mission statement and it's definitely something that you will see show through. Um, just to let you know, this is, uh, as far as I know, the only uh, practice of its kind in Sarpy County and definitely in Papillion. Um, it's, a, it's a newer concept uh, called concierge medicine. And really what it does is puts the focus back on the patient and doctor relationship. And uh, I think it's so important to have that trust and that uh, communication and support for us to truly be as healthy as we can be. Um, so from that aspect, I do feel it's, it's about getting back to basics. It's about not having the mindset that um, a pill is the answer for everything, will fix everything. For, for Brooke and I, it goes much deeper than that. <laughs> there we go. Now that's what's happening around Papillion. There are lots of ways to stay up to date. You can find us on Facebook, follow the City of Papillion on Twitter and Instagram, or watch our YouTube channel. And of course, information about all of our departments and programs is available on our website, www.papillion.org. Or just call the Mayor's Hotline at 402-827-1111. Thanks for watching.